is Business Rockstars. Starting a business, finding the money, what you need to know to become a rock star entrepreneur. So Henry Ford said the only real mistake is the one that you don't learn from. I'm Ken Rakowski, Business Rockstars, Rockstars from around the world. They join us right here in our studios in Santa Monica, California, and we learn from them what it takes to start, grow, and fund a business. And starting and growing a business is what we're going to focus on today. We're here to make entrepreneurship really easy. Businessrockstars.com is the website. Click on the Watch Live button and see what's happening in the studios right now. Later on in the show, we're going to have Gregory Markell join us, and we'll talk about what it takes to be on top of the search engines, and we'll find out what the secret is to that. And he works with people like uh, Tom Cruise and big brands, so he understands exactly what it takes to do, do that. And then later on, a young entrepreneur, 25 years old, and in that short period of time, she has done more than most people have done throughout an entire lifetime. Nancy Lou is going to join us. So in the studio right now, probably one of the top brands when it comes to wine is uh, Barefoot, Barefoot Wines. And I'm looking at these two right here, and the story is this. Let me just get it right. You really knew nothing about the wine industry. Right. You took position in assets uh, from somebody, and out of a laundry area of a farmhouse, you launched the company. Absolutely Am I true. right? That's right? it. Michael Houlihan, Bonnie Harvey, congratulations. You are now out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you did it. You did it for 30 years, I think, right? No, 20. 20. Felt like 30. Felt like 30 really went on that long. But for 20 years, because now what you guys get to do is you get to go back and look at what happened and how it went, and you become mentors and teachers now, which I think is probably one of the coolest gigs in the world to have, right? Oh, yeah. We're loving it. We're talking to students of entrepreneurship at universities throughout the U.S. So do you see universities as being good catalysts for entrepreneurship? Do they get it? Uh, they're getting it. It's a relatively new form of study for them. So, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it didn't exist. Now right. it's all the rage. Everybody's got a different idea of how to do it. Uh, we have our own ideas having done it. So we give them some constructive criticism. But uh, it's a very interesting to see what they are teaching. We tell the kids, hey, don't drop out like Job's, okay? Stay there. Get the formal education. If we had it, maybe it would have taken us 10 years instead of 20. Good point. I, I go back to the – do you remember this movie called Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield? Do you ever remember this? Rodney Dangerfield, remember the comedian? Yes, okay. yes. He went to school because his son went to school, and he was a successful business person. And in a business class, the teacher's teaching what business is. And Rodney Dangerfield's already a multi-multi-millionaire. And he goes, no, that's not what business really is. Business okay. is so different. Because most people in academia aren't exposed to business. They are book knowledge people. You guys are school of hard knocks, right? Exactly. You went yeah, through yeah. it. Graduated with honors. You gra <laughs> <laughs> so when you travel then throughout the university structure, around the world, by the way, we're not just talking here in the States, correct? Right. Right. What type of stuff do you tell these students that are, want to become entrepreneurs? We call them entrepreneurs. What, mm -hmm. what's, what's some ideas that you give them that are a little different than maybe what the educational system would give them? Well, one thing, we tell them to start small. We tell them it's okay to make mistakes, but when you're making the mistakes, you're going to be learning from them. So do it in a small area so you can go around and apologize so you can uh, make it right. And when we say right, this is how you make a mistake right. W-R-I-T-E. You write it down. <laughs> so that's one of the lessons that we give them. Just we say write down. never, never... Never waste a perfectly good mistake. Well, you, you say you guys w documented your mistakes? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Michael, we're, you... you we've you, written you, books on this subject. Because you... Volumes. <laughs> you remember the mistakes because you actually physically wrote them down. Absolutely. That's interesting because most want to say, hey, I did that. I kind of want to put that in the back of my mind and then not Then it's going to happen again and again, yeah. isn't it? So writing it down. Let's go back to Barefoot. What would you say then, as you're starting this business, what were some of the first mistakes that you remember you made beginning the company? Well, I think probably the biggest mistake we made was we thought it had to do with wine because it was the wine business. Makes sense, right? It had nothing to do with wine. No? It had to do with distribution management. Oh. And what we find is that most people that produce products, especially consumer products that have to go through a distribution system, require vigilance 24-7 of the marketplace and understanding what everybody has as a motive between you and the general public so that you can satisfy their desires all the way down. You know, you've got to go through a distributor. What, what's his, what does he want? Okay, distributor's manager. What does he want? Distributor salesperson. What do they want? You know, store owner. What does he want? Store manager. What does he want? Store clerk. What does he want? 
And then if you're lucky, you get to sell the general public. Okay, you said it was distribution, but it sounds like it's actually people management, right? Relationship it's totally, management. It's totally, yeah, it's, right. all, it's all relationship management. Bonnie, when did you realize that? How far into Barefoot were you to realize it wasn't about wine? Well, I think it was several years. Michael was going out trying to push our product on people, and we started listening to Brian Tracy and Earl Nightingale, and we realized that it's much better to be an assistant buyer, to realize what it is that your buyer wants and needs and stand beside them mm -hmm. and then trying to push at them. Did, did you two take different types of roles as you were doing this oh. business? Oh, absolutely. That's what made it successful, and that's what kept us together as a couple also, is because we had different responsibilities. We had uh, different skills. He would go out there and slay the dragon, <laughs> and I'd, <laughs> I'd be juggling payables and receivables uh, back at the office. You're managing the castle, right? I am. Yeah. And I you're the, the knight. Castle. Right, I'm fighting the hunt. You're, you're you're out there, but it it's it. But did you ever impede on one another's roles and responsibilities, or were there clear delineations of who did what? They were very natural. It they were was natural. just what our talents were. But we worked together so much, uh, so uh, so many of the ideas and our goals we worked on together. But the goals we take a different approach. Okay, so Michael, so. if you can then reach out to, because co-founders I think are important. If you could have a partner in the business, it makes. But you don't feel alone, right? Any suggestions on roles and responsibilities to people that are starting off right now and how they should either, do they craft them, do they write them down, do they agree upon them, or do they allow it just to flow naturally like you two had it? Well, I think that if you have a good idea for a business and you're an aspiring entrepreneur or you're starting a new business, you really have to take a look at your own skills. And you got to be honest about what are my skills, okay? And then you have to be honest about what skills are necessary that you don't have. So many businesses fail because uh, the perpetrators try to do everything. Yeah. You know, they can't do bookkeeping. They can't do personnel management. Maybe they don't know how to hire, okay? Uh, maybe they don't know how to sell. But they can write a hell of a program or an app. Mm -hmm. They really got that down cold. So write down what you're not good at? Yes, and that should be what you look for in a business partner. I like that. Again, the word write is W-R-I-T-E. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's so important because it makes things right. Correct? Yes. You write it down. You document it. Hey, any of the stuff that we're talking about, do you have like maybe a book? Because I know your first book, New York Times bestseller. It's great. Do you have something out that uh, can even talk about the entrepreneurial culture? I can talk about it. It hasn't been released yet, but uh, it is going to be released uh, on Jeff Haslett's show, which is uh, actually airing this week. Wait, wait, did we just... We just plugged... Trump? So, we just... We trumped Jeffrey. <laughs> we <laughs> hold the book up right in the okay, camera. There you go. There we are. Okay. All right. So, so we wrote this. We wrote this for you, Jeff, and your crowd. Okay. Oh, I love and, it. And uh, it's called the entrepreneurial culture because this turns out to be one of the biggest, uh, most popular search words uh, from the C-suite uh, these days. It turns out that big corps have gotten the bug. And they want to be entrepreneurial, too. Can we so, talk about that culture when we come back? Sure, we can. All right, uh, Michael and Bonnie, we're going to talk about the entrepreneurial culture, exactly what that is, and how you could adopt it to your business. Sounds good? You got it. Sounds All right, great. and then later on, we're going to find out what takes us to be on top when it comes to search engines. Ken Drakowski, you listen to Business Rockstars. Why banning social media in the workplace is a stupid idea. I'm Ken Rakowski. This is a Business Rockstars Minute. The work environment has dramatically changed over the past several years with more people spending their time in front of computers and more employers are making sure those hours aren't spent on social media. Liking, sharing, and commenting aren't allowed in one out of five workplaces as many employers are blocking access to Facebook. But does banning social media really boost productivity? No, you need a break. If an employer spends two hours on Facebook a day, then that's a problem. But for most, it's about 15 minutes on social media, and that's divvied up throughout the day. By banning social media from employees, especially the younger ones, that's Gen Y, you could be losing some good employees. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter isn't bad for your business. It's the abuse, and your good employees know it. This has been a Business Rockstars Minute. For more Business Rockstars, go to businessrockstars.com. Attention, Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. 
To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-514-1000. 1-800-514-1000. Call 1-800-514-1000. 1-800-514-1000. All State's 10th Annual America's Best Drivers Report ranks the largest 200 cities in the country based on car collision frequency. Fort Collins, Colorado is named America's safest driving city, with Brownsville, Texas coming in second. All State's Mike Roach explains how, this year, the report is more comprehensive than ever. On the All State website, we now have a new tool that's interactive and allows consumers to look at their city's rankings for 2014 and to look back historically for the rankings during the 10-year history that we've run this report. For the first time, the report factors in how things like population, population density, and precipitation can affect each city's ranking. Allstate offers tips on dealing with these challenging roadway conditions. When driving in precipitation, it's always key to know and understand the road conditions, where you're heading, and also keeping your vehicle properly maintained because you never know when bad weather's going to strike. To see the 2014 rankings and interactive map, visit allstate.com slash best drivers report. Years ago, the family doctor was a fixture in communities across the country. He'd come into your home and personally treat whoever needed help. He was part of the family. And while that practice has faded into memory, there is someone who keeps the tradition of personal health care alive, your local HealthMart pharmacist. While much of healthcare has become confusing and impersonal, you can drop by your neighborhood Health Mart pharmacy anytime, where your pharmacist will know you by name, not by refill number. That's the spirit of caring you can expect from each independently owned Health Mart pharmacy around the country. So even if a doctor won't be stopping by your house today, you can stop by your local Health Mart pharmacy to get the advice, encouragement, and expert guidance you deserve. Visit HealthMart.com for the location near you. HealthMart, caring for you and about you. This is Business Rockstars. Starting a business, finding the money, what you need to know to become a rock star entrepreneur. There's a quote from Oprah Winfrey. She says, there's no such thing as failure. This is what she says. She says, failure is just life trying to move us into another direction. I'm Ken Rakowski, Business Rockstars. Like I said, we got all these great rock stars that join us in our studios in Santa Monica, California. I like to refer to it as the epicenter of opportunity. We learn from them what it takes to start grow and fund a business. We're focusing on starting and growing a business, making entrepreneurship really easy. Joining me in the studio, their book has been, uh, I I believe, on the New York Times bestseller list for a while, right? Well, two months. That's a long time, guys. You realize New York Times bestseller really goes in hours. (laughs) No, it, it does. It's trackable in hours, meaning you can actually fall on and off the list if things aren't successful very quickly. Most people don't know that. So being two months is a long time. That's like a Beatles album almost, okay? So congratulations. <laughs> um, it's called The Barefoot uh, Spirit. People want to pick it up. Where do they go? Well, they can get it at Amazon, or they can actually go to our site, thebarefootspirit.com, and pick it up. So, Michael and Bonnie, how long did it take you to write this book? Uh, the first <laughs> book took us about four months, and we threw it in the garbage. It was no good. Why'd it you... wasn't amusing. It, it, so we got an excellent author, and we gave him <laughs> our stories, and he wrote a New York Times bestseller from our stories, from oh, wait, our wait, wait, experiences. Wait, you really threw it in the garbage? Yep. Absolutely, 100% of it. Didn't yes. you know as you were going through it, it was kind of maybe not going to make it like halfway? You had to finish the whole thing? I did. He didn't. <laughs> He's stubborn. <laughs> yeah, I okay. saw it through. No, and I understand that. Then and I threw it. I, I get it. And you said he's stubborn. 
Yeah. Do you see any of that, Bonnie, as being a positive and so on? Because many people say our negatives and our positives are kind of living in the same, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, you've got to stick to it to see it through the to the end. But sometimes, I don't know, it, it can go <laughs> a little too far. I don't. I have a feeling yeah. if you guys drive for a long period of time, there's the we, nice discussions in the car, right? We, we've we got some good discussions. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your new book, I just want to work with the title, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the Entrepreneurial Culture. What does that mean, entrepreneurial culture, Michael? What is that? Well, culture, you know, it's more than what you get in your yogurt, right? Right. Okay, so this has to do with what is the general feeling, the mood that your company has. When you talk to your employees, you know, are they cheerful? Are they fearful? So that's all culture, and it all comes from the top, you know. So it's basically your attitude toward many things. It's your attitude toward labor. Do you see labor as a cost, as a, as a commodity, or do you see it as an asset? Uh, do you treat people on a need-to-know basis, or do you treat them on a know-the-need basis? Do you ask them their opinion about stuff? So all of these kinds of, of uh, principles that you hold as a leader affect the way that your people behave toward each other, toward your customers, toward your vendors, and everybody else. That's culture. What's What was the culture at Barefoot like when you guys started it, Bonnie? Oh, well, when we started it in our laundry room, there was just the two of us. How was the so. culture there? Was it okay? How was Mr. <laughs> Stubborn over here, huh? <laughs> well, no, it was... <laughs> what, we, what, we were, what we were able to do is to build teamwork, where everybody understood what their responsibility was and what their teammates' responsibility was and how that they ha were relying on each other. And they also were very appreciative of working there because they were given respect, they were given an opportunity to contribute to the company with their ideas because they realized what everyone else uh, was relying on them and that they were relying on the other people. And because they understood that the money came from sales. So we had a two-division company. We had sales, and we had sales support. Wow. That's all. And that no, but was that's it. that's brilliant, actually, because most don't realize how yeah. important that is. Yeah. External side of sales is what's going to fund the business to continue to grow. And we, right. we enforce that by making sure that everybody got a bonus or a 401k match on how well the company did in terms of sales, in terms of growth, in terms of profitability every quarter. So they didn't have to have a very long attention span and they would get rewarded like three or four times a year. This is how the company did. Some people that were in what we called sales support, you know, they were like an accountant would say, no, I'm an accountant, you know, I go to professional accounting meetings, you know, I've got my own journal, you know, how could I affect sales, okay? So we, we said, you'll find out because your bonus is going to be based on sales. The sure enough, that. he gets a call from our top salesman. He's got a meeting with Mr. Big in Florida at a giant supermarket tomorrow morning at 8. He needs these documents by 7. The guy stays up all night, gives him the documents. Because it's, again, supporting the sales team. Right. He didn't just put them in his end basket and say, I'll get to it sometime next so week. So if you go back to the culture you said is top down, mm -hmm. that means, it, but you can't dictate it. No. No, it's no really you have to live it. You have to right. feel it. We think the key word is permission. Okay, help me out with that. What do you mean permission? Okay, so you have to give people permission. You have to oh, give them okay. permission to have fun. You have to give them, give them permission to make mistakes. You have to give them permission to be creative. Was it fun to work for you guys, Bonnie? Was it fun? Oh, well, I think so, yeah. Well, it, it, was, it was fun. Well, one thing is you've got to have a good sense of humor if you're going to put a foot on your label. So you were okay. the one who had the good sense of humor, obviously. You would walk in there and be delightful. <laughs> Mr. Stubborn over here would be the stick in the mud, right? No, no he's, he's rather entertaining he for the most part. He is entertaining. I yes. know he is. In yeah. a very sarcastic yeah. kind of uh -huh. a way. Okay. But it's fun to share creativity. It's fun to solve problems. And so we would tell our staff not only our, our goals and expectations, but our problems in getting there, our challenges. We don't really have problems. We just have challenges. And they would help us solve them what they would be would your them. hardest point ever in the business oh i think the hardest point that we faced was growing the business actually getting it started launching you know that's that's that was easy comparatively no. Compared we no. thought it was hard but then when we started to grow the business that's when we found out what difficult really was how big did barefoot get when it's at its top peak how big was it? It was in all 50 states. It was in 28 foreign countries. It was in 200 supermarkets. It was in all the military bases. We were selling 600,000 cases a year. And we did that with only 40 employees. But you're saying getting to that point of that going up the mountain was the yeah. hardest, right? It was very difficult. Why was it difficult? 
it was difficult because we had misconceptions about what growth entailed. We had no idea, like we said, we thought we were in the wine business. We didn't realize we were in the distribution management business. We thought that our distributor was going to do his job. We thought the retailer was going to do their job. Right. We had no idea that we would have to hire our own guys to do everybody's job for them, thank them for it, recommend them to their boss you know, so with when, a smile. When you were on top, did you stay on top? Absolutely. You did. did so as you went up to the top, did the 40 employees that were part of your team, did they all celebrate in the upside? Because, again, you go to this entrepreneurial culture. Did the culture allow everybody to celebrate? Absolutely. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes, and they understood that they were taking on more responsibility and they were being given a more appreciation for it, and they realized that the team was succeeding. Uh, that's a very exciting thing yeah, it's gotta to be. be a part of. So why And not only that, because we were part of the community, too. Because no, we, of course we worked, you are. We worked with Worthy Cause Marketing and community fundraisers. So, so you're doing what now they're all talking about being uh, social conscious around community conscious being a, you know social exact, entrepreneurs you, all that you were doing this a long time ago which you know John yes. Mackey has been trying to preach right now you were doing you know 30 years ago out oh, yeah. of necessity we were giving our wines away to nonprofits so we could get our wines in front of people in the, in the beginning because we couldn't afford advertising why would you okay? sell well when you go into business, you go into business for one of three reasons. You either can't find a job, so you give up an eight to five for a five to eight, right? You become <laughs> your own worst boss. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, and then uh, not only that, but if, you, if you're not at work, you don't make any money, see? Um, and forget benefits and vacations. So the second reason you go into business is you think that you're going to create a legacy. Somehow you think your kid is going to take care of you in your old age. Right. Good luck with that. Okay? You're right. And uh, the third reason you go into business is because you're trying to build equity in a brand. The brand is the name of your business or your product, and you think that you're going to build equity, and here's what that is. That means that you have a standing list of purchase orders that are dependable and regular that you can predict, okay. and your acquirer knows that. And that you, and you were get the to a point. Of all of them, right? You you get to a point. You get to a point in terms of just critical mass where you have to either sell, you you either have to buy it, you you, you either have to buy that brand, or it will compete with you. Your com your competitor will buy it, so you become an acquisition target. And you were at that point then, uh, Michael Glenn, Bonnie Harvey. You guys built the business up. You sold it ten years ago, right? About ten years ago. Just yeah, about, just yes. about ten. ten. And I. I I'm not asking this in a negative way, but when you look back, mm -hmm. do you ever go, I really wish they would do something a little different? I mean, we would have done this differently. Do you, do you ever do that now? Oh, about the acquirer? Yeah. No. No? no. Really, they, they, they've been a, a good company to be working with. I've watched how Barefoot has grown. And so you're I happy see, with it? I see all the nonprofits that they support, and that really warms my heart. Okay, so you're happy with that uh, direction. I mean, and, the flavor is wonderful. And in the ten, last 10 years, you guys, let's say with the book, people, again, want to get the book. Where do they go? They can go to thebarefootspirit.com. Okay, and uh, you guys do speak all over the country and world. Going to Norway, I heard, in November. Um, you're, it's going to be cold. But you get to travel all over the country. People want to find you as speakers, which I think, by the way, is one of the best platforms to go off and get to be paid as a speaker. How can they find out about you guys on spe for speaking gigs? Same place. Oh, it's all there? Yeah, thebarefootspirit.com. So social media now. You're, you know, what's your product? Product's you. Are you using social media for yourselves? Everything. Twitter, you name it. Yeah? Oh, which yeah. one do you like more? I like Twitter because yeah. people get back to you rather quickly, uh, and you know you get followers and whatnot. You like Twitter? Uh, yeah, I like and I like Facebook a little bit. Uh, you know they mess around with you. You know you, your your message reached six people yesterday. It reached fifteen thousand. <laughs> oh, but don't worry, we'll bump it for you. Just buy this ad. It's you know? it's kind of inverse than everything else. Yeah. Bonnie, do you like all of them, or do you kind of staying off of social? I stay off it a bit, but I do like LinkedIn. I've you like working, LinkedIn? I've been working with LinkedIn. You know, it's interesting. It, this actually goes with your personality. It's based upon what you just said, right? So Michael being this outreach external salesperson, right? Yes. Yeah. No, seriously, you're out there and you're looking at, hey, who are these relationships we have to keep tight and niche? And so you're actually Good using point. the proper social point, tools. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I, guys, this is what I want to do. Yep. Um, we want to get you back on the show as mentors, okay? Since obviously you hit the home runs, you get it. We like to bring somebody in the next couple of months that 
needs that help on starting and growing. Actually, they're in that growth growth phase. Are you up you up for that? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna get you back on. You guys actually Good. live up in the Napa area, right? Yeah. You're Sonoma. Sonoma. So I'm sorry. So, Whoa, it's like the it's UCLA. The thinking, it's the thinking man's Napa. Is it? I don't know what I don't know the difference. All I know is wine comes from up there and you get less right. earthquakes, I think. We got one the other day. Not as big as Napa. Uh, but it's nice to have you guys hang out again. People want to find out more. What's the website? It's thebarefootspirit.com. Michael and Bonnie, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Thanks, Ken. It's always a pleasure. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, how do you stay on top of the search engines and don't just think about Google. You know, YouTube is actually the second most searched site on the planet. How do you make sure tools like, well, let's go with YouTube, Yahoo, Bing. How do you make sure you're on top? We're going to find out from Gregory Markell later on. She's considered one of the top young entrepreneurs in America. How does she maintain her status quo? And how do you even work with somebody like that? We'll find out. Ken Rakowski, you listen to Business Rockstars.